if you follow me on TikTok, I don't know if you do, but you should. Weeks ago, I was begging for the beautiful disaster movie because I remember, like, I think it was like a couple months ago, it was being advertised everywhere. Like, people were showing the trailer, it was all over TikTok. I guess it's about a book. I've never read the book, never heard of it. And Dylan Sprouse is the main, you know, love interest. And I was, of course, I was I was interested because it's Dylan Sprouse and that man is fine. So I was really excited. I was like, oh my God, I can't wait for this movie to come out. Forgot about it. Then the movie came out, still forgot about it. And then a week after the movie started, stopped showing in theaters, I remembered the movie and I was like, oh my God, I want to watch the movie. Mind you, the movie was only in theaters for two days not on any streaming platforms i was googling everywhere they didn't say anything about when it was going to be on streaming platforms so i made a tiktok about i made a tiktok about it and i was like i need to see this movie like right now like i need somebody to get (laughs) to find me this movie somebody in the tiktok comments found me a link for the movie and so (laughs) last night i finally watched it (laughs) Y'all, it was so bad. I started crying. (laughs) So, I don't know if y'all remember, back when 365 Days came out, it was like a huge deal. Like, that movie was a big, big deal. And I didn't watch it until like way later. When I finally watched it, I literally cried the entire movie. Like, I was like sobbing because it was so cringy. Like, it was so cringy and bad. Like, my eyes were, like, I I was physically in pain watching that movie. And so, <laughs> and so, when I watched this movie, I got through the first 10 minutes and then my eyes just started to well up because it was just so freaking terrible. And I'm going to tell you guys from start to finish everything that happened in this movie. So, whenever they do put it on streaming platforms i want y'all to come back and i want y'all to watch this it was done listen this is not on dylan okay dylan i'm so sorry that you were involved in this but at the same time i'm not because that is the only reason why i sat through this whole entire movie i'm literally gonna tell you guys from start to finish the whole rundown of the movie so you can just close your eyes and imagine it okay so (laughs) we start off there's a girl's on a bus She's on a bus. She's sending an email to somebody. We don't know who she's sending an email to. Who's she sending an email to? And basically, she's sending an email to her dad that she's going to college and she's leaving and whatever. And she will call him whenever, right? She gets to college. She meets up with her roommate, which is like her homegirl, her best friend, her bestie. And like, oh my God, I can't stop. I'm so happy you're here. Like, I can't wait for this semester. Ah, 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 ah. And then they go to the dorm room they go to the dorm room and they they unpack and then they talk and stuff and she's like oh my god i got a new boyfriend her roommate is like oh my god i got a new boyfriend abby the main character she's like oh well i'm really tired so i'm gonna take a nap she's like no girl like i want you to meet him and he invited us out tonight so we're gonna go out tonight and da 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 so they go out and it's like this like underground dirty looking you know whatever and it turns out to be a fight this is in the first like 10 15 minutes of the movie like are we not even 10 minutes in yet right and so we get that scene from the trailer where we see him fighting in the little thing this movie happened way too fast like everything was going way too fast so she goes in there they introduce who she's fighting not who she's fighting who is fighting and you see one guy and then she's just standing there you know looking all she has on like a fucking cardigan or something (laughs) everybody else looks normal and she looks like i don't know like just over the top you know like in books where they're like oh you know we have this sweet character and she (laughs) You know how they supposed to be look. They supposed to look like overly innocent and like doe eyed or whatever. But she just looks fucking goofy. <laughs> so she's standing there. She turns around, bumps into Travis. Mind you, this is the first ten minutes. The first ten minutes of the movie. 
and they dramatically bump into each other and it, it's so awkward it's like it's not awkward in the movie but like it's awkward to watch because it's just like ugh, so overly dramatized anyway so he fights and then somehow he hits the other dude and like the blood gets on her sweater but okay so you guys know how when you watch like a show and there's like a character having like a fantasy so everything just seems like really like slow down and dramatic that's what that looked like except it wasn't a fantasy and it actually happened like somehow he just dramatically hit this dude and like the blood got on her shirt and I feel like whoever wrote this movie was like oh yeah that's in the book so we're just gonna like put that in there and then we're just gonna speed past everything else so mind you he doesn't know this girl he doesn't know this girl and so after the fight that lasted all of like three minutes not even like maybe like a minute and 50 seconds he he comes up to her and it seems like everybody else in the crowd just doesn't exist and like isn't talking and her friend who's with her man or whatever that's at the fight doesn't even see this interaction happening but there's everybody around them I don't know and it wasn't even that many people it seemed like they had like what 20 30 people <laughs> watching this fight and so he's like oh I don't know if it's good for me that you're here like <laughs> you're distracting me dude I don't it was just so cringy and bad and then he just starts giving her a nickname he calls her a pigeon, which is like really, I don't know, it was so cringy. And then like he walks off and starts talking to people. But like I said, it was just, there's not enough people in the crowd for it to just like make sense. And so like that was all that happened. And so she goes back home, she takes a shower and she's like, I guess she be hello lady meat to the fact that she ran into him <laughs> and his tattoos are there. <laughs> and so that was it. And I was just like, that was so cringy. Like I was, I had to pause the movie <laughs> and I just cried for a minute because it was just so bad. Like it was so bad y'all. And so <laughs> the next day she meets up with her home girl and her home girl's boyfriend. And she's like, oh, so like, what's up with, <laughs> with that Travis guy? And so he's like, oh yeah, like he goes to college here. She's like, he's in college. And then for some reason, for some reason, he just happens to show up behind her and like is touching her shoulders like he knows her. Mind you, they just met for like three minutes yesterday and he's already acting like he knows her. It was so weird. Like it just, I, I didn't, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. And so um, <laughs> they're talking. And so she's like, yeah, I got to go to class. She goes to class and it just so happens that he is also in that class but she doesn't know that because she's in class and she's looking through his instagram she's like oh my god he's so fine which he is you know like I, I feel you but then he pops up behind her and he's like yeah that's my favorite picture and so, <laughs> and so the teacher gets mad at her for talking and you know they do that thing where the teacher like oh answer the question since she wasn't paying attention and then she gives like this smart ass answer and it's actually like the correct answer and the teacher's like irritated at her but mind you the teacher was a terrible actress so it just didn't even anyway and so he's like oh my god you're so smart that's how i have dinner with me and she's like no i'm not interested you're not my type and so he's like i don't know he he, he makes her go on go to dinner with him and then the net the next scene literally all these scenes last for like 30 seconds each like i'm not even joking like each scene is just like a minute or two and then it's like the next thing like it doesn't make sense so <laughs> she's outside in like sweats and shit and he's on a motorcycle and he they do this little back and forth and she's like I'm not getting on that and then he keeps throwing the helmet to her she catches it throws it back blah 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 gets on the motorcycle with him they drive to get a burrito in this park and she doesn't let him pay for the burrito Y'all, I'm not even joking. This scene was three minutes. Three minutes. They walk for five steps while eating these burritos. They have like a brief conversation. And like, I guess they're flirting or whatever about the fact that, you know, she doesn't like that he's fighting because it's dangerous. And he's like, oh, you worry about me? They just met yesterday, y'all. 
<laughs> they just met yesterday. So it just seems like, like y'all don't even know each other like that. What the fuck is going on? And so, <clears throat> you, like I said, they walked like five, five feet. Her, I don't know how she finished that burrito that fast, but the burrito was magically gone. And there was just so happened to be a taxi. And she goes to get in the taxi. He's like, we just finished our food. And she's like, yeah, dinner's over. Gets in the car, goes home. Literally five minutes. Like that scene was all of five minutes. I don't know why they were trying to speed run this movie, but their little not date or whatever the fuck that was. They walked five steps with a burrito. And then she got in a taxi and went home. So after their date, she's running in the park and somebody asks her to throw this damn frisbee back and she accidentally hits this really boring guy in the balls and like it's yeah it, i don't know why that happened but she hit this really boring guy in the balls she says i'm sorry and that's it then she goes to take a shower the 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 plumbing is not working at the school mind you we're still we're only 16 minutes into the movie right this feels like something that would be like 30 minutes into the movie like the movie's moving very fast okay and so 16 minutes into the movie she ends up at her her roommate's boyfriend's house who just so happens to live with Travis they are roommates and so she has to stay there I don't know where her roommate and her boyfriend went if they I don't even know if they stayed there but yeah like something happened they go somewhere and she's like oh yeah like Travis is rarely here you won't even you won't even notice him blah 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 blah, right so she's like all right fine I don't know how long she's staying there because it just it wasn't that long I don't think so she ends up staying there they're like oh like whatever you do stay out of Travis's room cool she walks by he's doing it with some girl on the chair (laughs) And then the girl leaves and, and tells uh, Abby, oh, like, give him my number. Ah, 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 right. So she does. And so, um, you know, Dylan come out looking all good. <clears throat> my bad. Dylan come out looking all good. And he throws the number away and she gets mad for some reason. I don't know why people do this. And no tea, no shade. But they make the female characters, like, overly PC and annoying. It's very normal for him to be sleeping with this girl. Like, obviously. And then, anyways. So she goes, you just had sex with her. And then you're going to throw away her number. You're, everything was wrong with me. And, blah, 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 blah. and he's like, well, we both consented. I never said we was going to be in a relationship. It's fine. And she's like, you're what's wrong with your gender. And blah, blah. Oh, Shut up, girl. Anyway. <laughs> so he tells her that she can sleep in his bed and she's like i'm not doing that he's like well nobody else sleeps in my bed but me like my bed is sacred i don't know why this happened why wouldn't he offer to take the couch or like offer to give her the couch why didn't anybody offer her the couch anyway she ends up studying for her biology exam in the bed and he's doing whatever he's doing around the apartment and taking a shower or whatever. He comes back in there and she's like, oh, like my highlighter broke. Do you have another one? <laughs> and so he's like, yeah, the top drawer. He's like, actually, never mind. Don't go in the top drawer. She goes in the top drawer. He got all kind of crazy shit up in there. Booty beads, <laughs> vibes, all that kind of stuff. Hella condoms. And so she she goes on her, you know, feminist rant again. And he's like, well, there's nothing wrong with practicing safe sex because he does have like hella condoms in there. So um, she she starts like spraying her books with Lysol or whatever, whatever. And so <laughs> what happened after that? She does study and they get he get, she goes to sleep and then he takes a shower. My bad. She goes to sleep and then he takes a shower. He comes out. She's asleep, allegedly. And <laughs> she sees his butt while he's getting dressed. Why did he get in the bed with her? I don't understand why he got in the bed with her. Why wouldn't you get on the couch? Anyway, they slept in the same bed together. Mind you, they just met like five minutes ago. Like, <laughs> we're not even 20 minutes in the movie at this point. They just met a couple of days ago. He's in the bed with her. And... <laughs> 
they're they're sleeping and so then we get okay next day oh next day y'all he get he has morning wood she's sleeping and she's dreaming and for some reason like she grabs it for an abnormally long time and he's like um that's not what you think it is and so then he wakes her up and then she screams and then they start fighting and then her friend and her friend's boyfriend come in the room and they're like what happened and they're not arguing she still has her pajamas on like she has on like them uh you know like them children's (laughs) not children's pajamas okay normal people i feel like don't sleep in pajama pants with the little button-up shirt like it was just an obnoxiously like over the top pajama situation like most people just sleep in like you know some thin pajama pants maybe like a shirt or something but it was like you know like the kind of little children's set where you got the little button up that you wear on christmas morning and then you run down the stairs and be like oh my god look at all my presents <laughs> that's what she had on and so <laughs> she just storms out of the apartment she's like oh my god my biology test so she leaves goes to her biology test trips in the mud gets mud all over her then we see her after the test and she runs into her homegirl and she's like oh i passed my test mm. her best friend's like what happened and so like they talk for a minute <laughs> and then um she runs into the boring guy that she hit in the balls with the frisbee they're, they're bonding for a second flirting and he's like oh have dinner with me and she's like oh my god absolutely yes travis is still blowing up her phone like can we talk about it she doesn't respond <laughs> So she goes out to dinner. She okay. So at this point, she's back at her regular dorm, and she's getting dressed for her date. I don't know why the fuck she, like, girl. Like I get it, but I don't get it. If the shower is broken, why can't you sleep at your own place? Like you can just go to your friend's house. And I don't know. Anyways, so she's back at her regular dorm, and she looks good. Like the girl looks good. She got in this red dress. You know, titties is sitting. And she goes to the date with, I don't even know his name. He was just so boring and uninteresting. Um, <laughs> she goes on this date and he's like, oh, I got tickets for this show. And she's like, oh, do you want me to leave? He's like, no, I want you to go with me. And they go to this show and she thinks it's like Shakespeare or something because it's at this nice hall. But it's a fight. And it just so happens that who's there? Travis. Travis is fighting. And so when they announce his name, she's like, I need to get some air really quick. So she goes out into the hallway and Travis just so happens to be in like the hall. And he starts yelling at her, at her. And he's like, what was that? Like, why aren't you texting me back? Da, 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 da. Now you're on a date. You got your titties out. What's going on with you? And so <laughs> um, they make this bet that if he loses, well, if the other opponent lays a finger on Travis, that he will go three months without sex. And if he doesn't, if he wins the fight, then she has to live with him for a month. And so she's like, okay, fine, but I'm not having sex with you. And he's like, I don't want you. I don't want you like that. Like, I just, you're good for me. I need you around. Whatever. Like, y'all just met. Like, (laughs) y'all just met, like, three days ago. Like, what is happening? So that happened. Obviously, he wins. And her date just appears out of nowhere. And Travis is, like, doing his little laps. And he's like excited that he won and so her date is like what's that about then there's a they shoot to the car mind you all these scenes are like five minutes each like real fast and so they're in the car and he's like i leave you for five minutes to go get a snack and you're moving in with travis whatever the fuck his last name is (laughs) and she's like it's not like that like we're just friends i lost a bet and um i still really have fun on this date like i want to go on another date with you can i get a good night kiss and as they're about to do a good night kiss travis is banging on the window and then the little boring dude is like get out the car like just just get out the car like i'm scared he will kill me and so it's this this scene goes on for like a couple more seconds which is like longer than it needs to and she's like no no no, let's get out the car she gets out the car and travis playfully scares his dude off they go upstairs and she's yelling at Travis. They're both in the bed by now. <clears throat> He's like, I didn't think you would actually do it. And she was like, yeah, I'm a woman of my word. Da, 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 da. And so <laughs> she's like, don't touch me. Like, wall of China, they argue. And 
that's where that happened. So then now, since, you know, I don't know why this movie had to be so fast, we just get a montage of them sleeping together for a handful of days. Like, I don't know how many days, but it wasn't the full 30. It was just like a, a handful of days. And for this handful of days, for some reason, mind you, they're not dating. They're not dating. We get like a montage of like just their living situation, the girlfriend, like her homegirl and her home homegirl's boyfriend. Like we get, we see them around the apartment. They have dinner together in the apartment. We see Abby and the homegirl and some other girls like doing yoga. And then the guys are like, oh, they doing yoga. Look, look. And so it's just like, you know, just cute little montage of them living together. For some reason, he takes her to visit his family. Mind you, they're not dating. They just live together. And so when he takes her to meet his family, they're acting like that's his girlfriend. They're like, oh, I heard so much about you. Da, 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 da. And um, he has five. Well, no, he's he has four brothers. Or five brothers. No, it's four. It's four. It's four. His four brothers. And the f- most funny looking one, <laughs> mind you, Travis is the finest one of his brothers. He has twin brothers. He has like an older brother and like another brother with long hair. The dad kind of fine too. But anyways, the ugly one with the long hair is like, oh, like I'm the most attractive one. He's putting his arm around Abby and trying to flirt with her. Whatever. So then they go to dinner. It's real ghetto. They having KFC. Nasty. I don't know why they having KFC. <laughs> um... And so they end up being like, oh, like instead of, instead of like eating right now, we're going to play poker. I forgot to mention at the very beginning of the movie, the reason she went to college is because she is a poker prodigy and her dad would like, her dad wanted to make her do like poker for like professionally because he was having a lot of financial troubles. And so she would always have to like, professionally play poker to win him money and like he was like really addicted to money and stuff so she ran away she wanted a normal life so she was not she did not want to play poker and so she was like oh like I can get you guys some drinks and stuff and so after they played for a while they were like are you gonna play like can you play poker with us and she was like they're like we'll go easy on you and you know she's like well it's not a a matter of you going easy on me it's me going easy on you and I'm like okay so she sits down she beats all of them and they're like, where'd you learn to play? And she's like, oh, home. And then the oldest brother looks up the fact, well, starts telling, well, her dad, the older brother looks her up. And then the dad starts telling a story about this, this girl <laughs> that lived in Vegas, whose dad and that taught her basically her life story. And so the brother's like, this is you, isn't it? And sends the article, like post the, sits his phone down with the article of her when she was 13, the chess prodigy from Vegas. I mean, not chess, fucking poker prodigy from Vegas. <laughs> My bad, y'all. And so she's like, I'm sorry, I didn't want to hustle you guys, but like, whatever. And they're like, they start fangirling over her. And like, they take pictures. It's really cute. <laughs> and then we go to the next scene. After they come back from his family house, we get another montage of them living together. And so they, you know, like they do that thing where they like breeze with days of the calendar. Da, 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 da. So we on like day 26 and they like hanging out with each other. And like he, he like play fighting with her in the park, you know, cause he's a, he's a fighter. <laughs> and so then we cut to, I mean, what happened? She's talking to her homegirl about like, oh yeah, like I don't really like him like that. I, um, and then <laughs> we get to, y'all, this is so cringy. I'm sorry. I'm going to try not to cry while I'm telling you. <laughs> we get to a scene where she's working on her homework in the bed. Um, Mick is blowing her phone up. Oh, wait. Okay, so no, that's that's what they were talking about. Her and her friend was like, um, oh, like, is Mick still bothering you? She's like, yeah. Like, she's like, you need to just cut him out of your life. Like, you need to get Mick out of your life. Mick is her dad. So, um, she's working on her homework in bed on his side of the bed, on Travis's side of the bed. Travis comes in from a shower. He has a towel on, looking all good and everything, right? And so, she puts her computer, her laptop, on his, like, side of the nightstand. 
Remember that, okay? And then she scoots over to her side. The laptop is open. She doesn't close it. The laptop is open. <laughs> but the screen, like, turns off, okay? Remember that. She could have easily put the damn laptop on her side of the bed, scooted all the way over, but she left it on his side of the bed. And so <laughs> they do that thing. And I know y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, when you read it, it seems kind of cool. But when they acted it out, it was the most terrible acting ever. I'm so sorry, Dylan. I love you so much. But no, they did that thing where, you know, where they make somebody laugh. And then they do like the little thing where they pin your arms. And like one person's on top and they do the whole, oh, I pinned your arm. Oh, I'm tickling you. That shit happened. But it was so cringy. Like it didn't it didn't look cool at all. It just it was so freaking cringy. And like it didn't flow well. It wasn't smooth. Because you know, like sometimes when you read it in a book or you see it in a movie, they do it real smooth. Like so he was tickling her, she snorted, and then like he mind you, he's still in the towel. He gets on top of her and it was so like so hard to watch. <laughs> it was so hard to watch. And so then they end up making out for like two seconds two seconds mind you all of these scenes are going really fast we're not even we're not even we we barely halfway through the movie at this point we had like 30 something minutes i remember this i remember this exactly because of how fast the movie was going i'm telling you this from memory so she throws him off he's on the floor and she's like are you okay he's like no like that's how he said it he was just like no i'm not (laughs) and so she gets up and I get they have like this weird moment and so she gets up and knocks on the door so I guess he tells her that he likes her or whatever I don't know I don't remember then she knocks on the, on her homegirl's door her homegirl comes out and they both go to the bathroom together and she like tells her what just happened and she's like I think I'm in love with him like blah, blah, blah. and so while that's happening her computer mind you her laptop is on his side of the bed it lights up with a message from Mick she he doesn't know that mick is her dad so he gets mad gets dressed puts gets gets out of just the towel that he had on and leaves the apartment so she comes out of the um he slams the door too real dramatic so she comes out of the bathroom and she's like travis where'd you go and so she she goes outside doesn't see him and so she texts him he doesn't come back until the next day and so he comes back drunk with a cat and so excuse me everybody gets mad Everybody gets mad, like, you had us so worried, da 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 He sits on the couch with the cat, and they're like, that's the neighbor's cat, that's not your cat. He was like, well, this cat loves me, unlike somebody else in, in here, whatever. And so she he finally presses her about Mick, and she's like, you're being crazy, like, why are you looking through my stuff? Mind you, she left her laptop open on his side of the bed, weirdo. Um, And so... He's like, well, I misread that situation. I guess I was just being jealous. I'm sorry. She was like, well, I don't need any more crazy in my life. Like, I don't trust you. Like, how long have you been snooping through my stuff? Girl, shut up. Anyway, so she ends up going to the library and falling asleep in the library. Um, But mind you, when that whole scene happened, when they were in, in the bedroom before he got mad and left, they had acknowledged that it was her birthday in two days. She was asleep in the library. The boring dude runs into her. He asks her out again. They end up having a ramen date in the library. This is uh the day after Travis comes back. Right. This is the day after Travis comes back. And so he gets a text while they're having ramen. And he's like, oh, like I have this thing. And she's like, it's not another show, is it? And he's like, no. He takes her to a frat house and it's a surprise party for her. She's so excited. She sees her best friend. She don't know nobody else there but her best friend, her best friend's boyfriend and the boring dude. And so she's like, yeah, like this was all Travis's idea. And so she realizes that now she has to talk to Travis after the whole thing that just happened. So she talks to him and he he did all this for her birthday as an apology for reading her text messages that would just happen to be on her open laptop on his side of the damn bed um (laughs) he shouldn't have apologized for that but anyway she's like he's like oh i see you came with whatever that dude's name is And, and she's like yeah well i can trust him girl you don't even know him 
you you've known him for less time than you've known Travis. Like at least you've been with Travis for like twenty some days, but you only knew this dude. You only been out with him like briefly. Like you hit him in the balls. You went on one date with him, and you trust him. Okay, girl. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, we get these cringy scenes of her dancing by herself. And then she's dancing with her friend. Mind you, I don't know why, what the budget was, but they clearly couldn't have had that much of a budget because it, once again, it's supposed to be a full house frat party. It seemed like it was only 30 people there. There was too much room on the dance floor. Everybody looked awkward. It was not giving frat party. Like y'all could have gave everybody like some free pizza or something and had them pretend to be dancers behind y'all. Because what was that? Anyway. Then we get this very cringy scene between her best friend and her best friend's boyfriend. They're both drunk and um, they're arguing, but like it's so poorly acted. Like I cannot emphasize this enough. Like it's like if you got two children and told them to pretend to be drunk, they were so bad at this drunk argument that they were having. It was not believable at all. I don't know why the directors let that scene stay in the movie. I would have made them reshoot it until it, it, it was at least a little bit more believable. It was just so bad. And um, they break up for like two seconds. It wasn't even dramatic. Like, I guess it was supposed to be funny, but it wasn't funny. It was just really, really cringy. And so then they go back inside and she's crying. Her best friend's crying to her. And Abby's like, no, you guys would be fine. And then two seconds later, the boyfriend comes up and they start making out and then they're fine right and she starts dancing by herself again and then the boring dude is like hey i'm gonna go and she's like no like don't leave and so she's like she's super super drunk like her and her best friend got super super drunk and so she's like wrapped all around him and she's like trying to twerk on him but very poorly like she 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 cannot twerk and so the boring dude is like he's in the kitchen she's like what she's like he's like travis the dude you've been looking for all night and so she he was like, do us both a favor and stop lying to yourself and like, go be with him, whatever. He leaves. And then Travis is like, you're not drinking no more because she's about to go get a drink. And apparently he's he's been ca- counting her drinks all night, <laughs> which is kind of cute. <laughs> and so <laughs> they end up walking in that park that they were in and they're arguing. And she's like, how dare you throw me a party? with people that I don't know and da, 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 and blah 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 and then they end up kissing and then she throws up in his mouth yeah they do show that it's really gross and then we get this scene of them in the bathroom and he's watching her vomit and taking care of her and then he tells her that he's madly in love with her but it doesn't really sink in because she's drunk And so he's like, I'm going to get you another shirt. So he goes out the room to get her a shirt. And then she calls her dad. And she's like, yeah, dad, tomorrow's my birthday. She calls Mick, Mick, her dad. And she's like, yeah, tomorrow's my birthday. And da 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 da. And he's like, I miss you. I'm going to Denver or some shit like that. I don't know. Um, Blah, 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 blah. And then they hang up. And then Travis comes back in with a shirt. And they have this, like, funny scene where, like, she's drunk and, like, she she's like don't look and her boobs is out and then he turns around her boobs is out and she's like oh, i got you my boobs are ha ha and so <laughs> they do that she wakes up and she's like why don't i have a hangover and he's like oh i did this and this too ibuprofen da, 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 for you do you want breakfast in the bed like and she's like oh like because he's taking care of her he's such a good dude i don't know <laughs> i need to read the book but anyways <laughs> um she's like i gotta go to class or some some shit like that so she gets up she goes to oh wait wait i forgot so when she's on the phone with her dad she tells her dad that she's in college in sacramento and so while she's going to class some dude stops her in a g-wagon it's like it's your dad um my boss is gonna cut his legs off (laughs) if he doesn't pay (laughs) so she drops what she's doing and she gets in this car with this strange man i don't know why she does this like why would you do that she gets in this car with this strange man they go to vegas (laughs) they drive to vegas I think we have to like 40, we have to maybe like 40 minute mark at the, uh, of this story. Mind you, this movie is going very fast. We're at the 40 minute mark of the movie. Driving to Vegas and they meet up with the boss and her dad at a strip club and she's really mad at her father and 
they're like, he needs to give me $100,000 by midnight or we we chopping his legs off. And so she's like, no, I'm not doing this no more. And then they're about to cut his finger off. And she's like, fine, I'll do it. But she's underage to gamble in Vegas. I didn't understand this part at first until I looked it up. Because I'm like, how she in college and she underage? But I'm, I guess they mean like she's not 21, so she can't gamble. <sighs> okay, so then they're like, she's like, I don't want to get caught. And she, they're like, you're smart enough. Like, go do what you need to do. Avoid who you need to avoid. Make that money and then come out. So they attach the dude that um picked her up from college. They make him, like, wait outside for her. And she's like, you know, how done water down my drinks. I'm going to go do this. And then I'll call you when I got the money. She goes to the table. At this point, Travis is blowing her phone up because... He realizes that she's gone and her best friend has her location. So they see that she's in Vegas. He snatches the phone, goes to Vegas, drives to Vegas on his little motorcycle by himself. And we get this montage of her gambling. She makes all of the money. I guess it's kind of like a little funny scene. I don't know. Um, She makes all of the money and then she calls the dude outside and she's like, I got the money. I'm on my way out. She's walking out. Mind you, the girl looks good. They put her in a little hotel, a ghetto little hotel. And, you know, she looks really good. She got this really tight, cute blue dress on. And she makes the money. Um, She wins all the poker games, makes some money. And then she runs into a security guard. But the security guard is a guy that she used to go to school with. And so she's like, oh, yeah, like we should hang out soon. Ha <laughs> ha. He's like, yeah, but you know why I stopped you, right? Like, I have to take that. And so she's like, no, don't do this. Like, I really need this money. He's like, it's my job, whatever. (laughs) Fuck him. So he takes the money and she, she's crying. She calls her dad and she's like, get out of town. Like I lost it. I got caught. The dad is still at the strip club. So the dad, dad's like, okay, whatever. Then they cut to the scene where she's with the, the boss or whatever, this old man and the dude she came with. And he's like, I get a call saying you got my money and then you don't got my money. Like now I'm finna kill your daddy. And so (laughs) she's like, I had it, but then I got caught. I don't know why she would go there willingly by herself. Like they could just kill her. But anyway, the dad is nowhere to be found. They're like, oh, but we'll find him. Then we get this like weird scene where it looks like the old dude is about to like, you know, try to come on to her. But he's like, oh, no, no, don't worry. I'm gay. Then at that very moment, Travis busts through the door and he beats up everybody in the room (laughs) except for the old dude. And then at this point, Abby runs out the room and he chases after her. She gets in a taxi. He gets in a taxi. We don't even see them talking to taxi. There's a jump cut to them in the hotel hallway going toward her little ugly room. And he's she's like I, I had it covered I had it handled you're being crazy I told you I don't need any more crazy and then he goes I love you and she goes what and she turns around <laughs> and then they start making out but it was it was so weird like it wasn't even done in a cute way it wasn't like oh my god you love me it was like they just started it was awkward it was awkward the way that happened and she just started kissing him <laughs> and then it gets more awkward like I started crying again at this point because they go into the hotel room <laughs> And you know those scenes in movies where like they're making out and they're about to do it, but they're like banging up against like all of the 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 surfaces and they're like crashing into stuff and like knocking stuff over. They tried to do that, but it was so over the top. Like it was just so over the top. They destroyed the entire hotel room just trying to take off each other's clothes, and it was just so it was so cringy. Like they broke cabinets, broke the sink in the bathroom, broke the shower um knock down a whole like what do you call those things the drawers like you know you hear people knocking on the door you hear people like what is going on there shut up like phones is ringing they you hear cat noises for some reason and then they get in the shower the shower is cold they break the shower head like this scene like I said each scene is like five minutes but this part felt like it went on for so long and the bit was not even funny it wasn't even cute it wasn't hot it was just cringy and so after they break the whole hotel room break every mirror in the hotel room when they could have just went to the bed like normal people but anyways 
Then we cut to them in the bed. She sleeps. She's like, yeah, I'm so tired. The- He's standing up. He looks out the window. Oh, surprise, surprise. There's a fight happening out here and you get paid money. So he comes up with this idea. He leaves. She wakes up and she's like, oh my God, where are you? He sends her a little video and he's like, hey, pigeon, like I made a deal with the dude. You and your dad are off the hook. You can go back home. I'll be back. I'm going to do this fight for this money and um, everything's going to be good. Right. I got a car waiting for you downstairs. Rental car, whatever. <laughs> so she goes downstairs and who does she run into? Her dad and Jesse, the dude from the the dude. Oh, wait, I forgot. <laughs> this is so funny. So when the, the security guard, Jesse, he he confiscates her chips. When she gets to the office with the boss, she tells she tells them the dude's first and last name like she snitches so fast so i don't that was just so funny to me because like why did she give him up so fast like first and last name she's like no this dude first last name did it anyway so she runs into him and her dad in the parking lot and they're talking turns out that it's a scam like when I think I mentioned it earlier, but when they did that montage of her when she was playing poker and they were telling the story or whatever, the dad said, if you can't spot the chump in the first five seconds when you're playing poker, you are the chump. And so they do like a brief flashback to that part because her dad played her. There was a whole setup. Her dad just wanted the money. The Jesse dude ended up taking the money and giving it to her dad. And they were trying to get her to come back so she can play poker professionally and not go to college. Like, she would have to owe them forever. So she comes up behind the Jesse dude, tases him, and then she gets in the car with her dad, who's in in this car. He put the money in the back of the car. Or no, he puts the bag in the back of the car. She drops her bag. And so, um, yeah, this is so crazy. She's yelling at him. And he confesses that he just wanted the money. And she's like, well, then you need to get a job like a regular person because I guess he's in like gambling anonymous or whatever the fuck. And so she's like, get out of the car, get out the car. So he gets out the car and she's like, stay out of my life. Like we done. She breaks up with her dad forever, (laughs) drives to the fight. She's trying to call Travis like, oh my God, you don't have to fight. Like this is a setup. Like none of this is, you don't have to do this. You don't know what you're in for. Like you're going to die. So she drives to the fight. The fight has like a long line because it's like a little paid, you know, everybody's trying to pay to get into this fight. And so the guy best friend, um, her best friend's boyfriend, which is Travis's roommate, ends up at the fight and he's like supporting him or whatever. <laughs> Cause I guess Travis posted on social media that he was doing this fight. And so he's fighting and this dude is like beating his ass with like chain. Like he has like a literal heavy ass chain and is like choking him out and beating him with it. And it's not looking good for Travis. So then the homeboy jumps in a fight and is trying to help. And he gets his ass beat too. And then um she comes in finally because she's in this long ass line. So she missed most of the fight. And somehow an electrical fire started. And so the building is about to burn down. So the fight is over. Like the dude is beating his ass. Like it's like stop trying to kill him and choke him out with the chain. It's like, oh no, it's a fire. So he leaves. She comes up there, picks him up. She's like, you don't have to fight. Like it was a scam. My dad's scam. He didn't look that beat up actually. Like I was actually surprised. Why you just did all of that and you got beat with a chain like that. Why is there not more damage done to you? But anyway, that's neither here nor there. They pick up the homeboy and then they leave they go back to the hotel she tells him like oh like it was all a setup my dad wanted some money and so she calls her best she calls her best friend and she tells her what happened she's like no like you need to come down here the hotel's fine like just come down here for a couple days so her homegirl's like are you sure it's safe she's like yeah so homegirl comes yo as i'm editing this i realized i forgot the part after they got back to the hotel, he finally tells her why he gave her that stupid ass nickname. 
And I really, I still don't get it. <laughs> it was like something about it being a dove or some shit. I don't know. It was really dumb and that nickname was really ugly. So um, I forgot to put that in there. <laughs> then we cut to them being outside. We're almost done with the movie, y'all. So we cut to them being outside. Then Travis is like, well, does this Jesse dude who left the bag in the back of the car, does he have any extra shirts? Find a shirt. They also find $100,000 that she won. Okay. And so she's like, yeah, that's my money. I want it. And so they, that's it. Like he puts the shirt on. They drink a little sip of vodka and they decide, you know what? Let's stay in Vegas for a couple more days. And he's like, that sounds like a disaster. And they're like, huh? And so <laughs> they stay in Vegas for a couple more days with $100,000. And that is the end of the movie. We get the end of the movie. And I'm like, oh my God, it's the end of the movie real lame and not the end of the movie we get look like a little uh screenshots uh photos of them they get married y'all they get married in vegas we get like pre-credits with pictures of them in vegas with their friends and and on the bed with the money and cake and all this kind of shit and then that's it i just i just told y'all the whole one hour and 35 minute play by play of beautiful disaster let me just get my criticism now let me get my criticism this movie went entirely too fast i feel like whoever whoever's idea this was was just like we're gonna take all these key moments from the book i've never read the book by the way i'm going to read the book now because i need to know if the book is this fucking terrible and cringy but I feel like they they were like oh here are these key moments let's just make them into little blips in the movie it seems like if somebody did a live action of every single TikTok clip you know how when people read a book on TikTok they'll put like a little clip of of whatever happened in the movie or in the book they're like oh this happened to get people to read it that's what I feel like this movie was the trailer looked good to me I'm not even gonna lie somebody left in my comment section they were like oh after I seen the trailer I wasn't going to disappoint myself. The trailer looked good to me. And the reason the trailer looked good is because they literally only took the few moments of the movie where it wasn't cringy. Like the movie was so cringy most of the time, but there were like a couple of scenes where it wasn't cringy. I forgot. I forgot a whole part. Y'all wait, hold on. (laughs) So the last day, I think it was when she was drunk. They did do it. There was a scene of them doing it after her little birthday thing when she threw up in his mouth. I forgot about that. That was that scene. But anyway, they just, I feel like they just rushed this movie so far because none of it made sense. None of the movie flowed together well. It just seemed like the whole movie was like a huge flashback of of just moments, just quick moments, five minute moments each also the fight scenes were so cringy like i don't i don't understand it it wasn't even hot like the fight scenes were so cringy he kept doing that thing where you know you fall on your back and then you flip up on your legs (laughs) and then i kept asking this the entire time why was he fighting in jeans every single fight he ever did he was fighting in jeans and boots and everybody else was fighting other shit why was he fighting in jeans y'all it was so bad i jesus christ it made no sense why he was being so comfortable with this girl that he didn't even know she was overly annoying and goofy and she made a lot of goofy decisions and like she was just so ugh, ugh. i don't i don't i don't like her <laughs> i don't like her um but yeah i'm so like i this is a, a prime example of be careful what you ask for because i was on tiktok begging for this movie and i'm so i understand why it's not out yet on streaming platforms do not put this movie out okay this movie was so bad like yeah i was watching it but like even if i was sober i probably would have cried harder because this was so bad like i only mildly entertained was entertained by this movie because i was high like dylan looked amazing mind you like that was that was the only thing getting me through it because he looked so good but jesus christ the movie was so bad it was so bad and everything I don't I just don't get it I feel like they bro let me write it next time like I don't I don't think 
I don't even know what to say, y'all. <laughs> it was just so bad. And I keep reading books that are so good. And I'm like, oh my God, I wish this was a movie. But directors and writers don't know how to do that. So maybe not. Maybe we don't need it as a movie. Maybe we don't need certain things as movies because they're so fucking terrible. Like this movie was terrible. It was so bad. Like it wasn't even watchable. Like if I watched this movie and I paid to watch it, I would be so upset. Like, I would genuinely be so upset because what the fuck was that? Like, I kept saying that the whole time I was watching the video. I'll probably post a YouTube short of me watching it. Like, I had, like, live reactions of me watching it. I could not believe that somebody stitched this movie together. Like, it didn't even seem right. Nothing worked together. Like, the transitions were bad. The music was bad. (sighs) Nothing, nothing made sense, y'all. Dylan listen I used to be I was always a Dylan girl okay growing up I was a Dylan girl and then when he started like doing too much with the facial hair and everything like that I switched over to Cole because Cole had the the dark hair and he was good I was like all right let's give Cole his turn like let's just and then Dylan Dylan got back in my good graces and I was like let me see this movie um yeah no I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I hope you got paid well for this. Also, they had like a couple of product placements. (laughs) Like we had a chime product placement in in the the little burrito scene in the beginning where they had their five second date. I just, this movie feels like a fever dream. Like I was so hot watching it, not in a good way. Like I was just hot. Like I was hot and I was crying because it was just so bad. And I could not believe that this was serious. Like somebody seriously put this together. A lot of the acting was super terrible. Not on the the account of the two main characters, but like everybody else was just terrible act. Ugh, it was just so bad, y'all. Like, whoever watches this movie, <laughs> not even whoever watches this video. I hope y'all get through the whole thing. I'm sorry. Like, I don't even know what to say. I just had to get it out. I had to tell somebody about this because I seriously got on the internet and begged for this movie. And now that I have it, I understand. Don't put this out. on. Don't put this out. Because if you put this out, Cole is going to, I mean, not Cole. (laughs) Dylan is going to get dragged. I don't need him to get dragged. I don't want him to get dragged for being involved with this because this movie was so bad and so cringy. And it just was the fighting CGI. The way they shot the fighting was just so (laughs) weird. (laughs) Don't put it out. I don't want him to take this L like that, okay? Let's just pretend that this movie did not happen and that I hallucinated the whole thing because that's what it felt like, okay? Anyway, that's all I have to say. Subscribe to be along for the ride. Um, Thank you for watching this. If you watched the whole thing, I had to just I had to just share this with somebody, all right? Anyway, have a good day. Don't watch this movie. Um, We're just going to look the other way if it do come out, all right? Bye. <laughs>